everyone, this is MJ and you are at my channel called Reading This Life. My channel is where we talk fiction, friends, and fun. Today, we're going to talk Cormac McCarthy. I've got some notes. I read both of them. The Passenger and Stella Maris. Stay tuned. remember before we get started to let me know are these books on your list to read or are they on your TBR are you waiting to see what all the reviews are um, do you like reading Cormac McCarthy leave me a comment down below so um, these books came out and I wasn't sure if I wanted to read them or not I have a love-hate relationship with Mr. McCarthy specifically um, his form of prose gets under my skin just a little bit. Um, you know, I get, I get why he chooses to do it, but, um, it's just not my cup of tea when I'm really trying to get into a book. So Cormac McCarthy, this is Blood Meridian. He has sections just like this. There's not a lot of paragraphs or punctuation or sentence structure so um and I get it that that's your taste that's what you do that's fine I get it but sometimes I don't want to read that I just don't I, I don't want to have to think about what I'm reading I don't want to worry about where the sentence stops and where it begins so I said I'm gonna do the audiobooks for the passenger and Stella Mars and I am so thankful that I did Okay, so first, uh, we're going to talk about The Passenger. Now, um, again, this was an audiobook, and I'm so glad I did the audiobook because of Cormac McCarthy's um, style, specific style that's unique uh, in his own writing. Um, and I really had no preconception as to what this book was about. Um, I kind of stayed away from the reviews. I know some of my fellow booktubers reviewed it, and they didn't really give a lot of details, which is good. Um, Brian at Bookish, his review really piqued my interest because we started talking about string theory, talking a lot about scientific theories. And that's something that I kind of have a little, I have a little fun with. I love string theory. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the blurb that's on the back because I don't think that that's a spoiler, but it's going to give depth to my little review, if that makes sense, because I have notes that are all over the place. Let's see. Here we go. This is for The Passenger. The Passenger, 1980, past Christian, Mississippi. It's three in the morning when Bobby Western zips his jacket, zips the jacket of his wetsuit and plunges into the boat deck into darkness. His dive light illuminates the sunken jet, nine bodies still buckled in their seats, hair floating, eyes devoid of speculation. Missing from the crash site are the pilot's flight bag, the plane's black box, and the tenth passenger. But how? A collateral witness to, to the nations, machinations, machinations, that can only bring him harm, Western is shadowed in body and spirit. By men with badges, by the ghost of his father, inventor of the bomb that melted glass and flesh in Hiroshima and by his sister, the love and ruin of his soul. Traversing the American South from garrulous bar rooms of New Orleans to an abandoned oil rig off the Florida coast, the passenger is a breathtaking novel of morality and science, the legacy of sin and the madness that is human consciousness. This book is heavy on theories. It is heavy on Not the meaning of life, but yeah, technically the meaning of life. There are questions that are posed that are tried to be answered. Bobby Western is just such a cool character for me. I really, really enjoyed his conversations that he had with people. Um, like I said, the narrator did such a great job with the, with the audiobook. Seven hours in, in The Passenger, I wrote this down. Seven hours in, I put a star next to it. Um, somebody asked him the private invest there's a private investigator that used to be a fortune teller but is now a private investigator asked what happened to bobby western what made him the way that he is and he said a sister that died 10 years ago so that is kind of key and we learned about that in the beginning of the book but he doesn't want to talk about it he's very closed up 
have a lot of unanswered questions with this book. There are so many different things going on. And then when you move over to Stella Morris, which is um, a psychiatric ward, psychiatric hospital, um, we get a totally different book with the focus being on the sister and her therapist, Dr. Cohen. And the entire book, which is only, The Passenger is 12 hours long. Stella Morris is a little under five hours long. Stella Morris is a therapeutic conversation between um, the patient and her doctor. And is it 100% therapeutic? Mm, it crosses the line in ethics for me. There's some things that are discussed and talked about that probably shouldn't be in a therapeutic setting, but who am I to say that? Okay, I'm going to read you the blurb from Stella Morris. Now see if you get any um, inconsistencies at the get-go. 1972, Black River Falls, Wisconsin. Alicia Western, 20 years old, with $40,000 in a plastic bag, admits herself to the hospital. A doctoral candidate in mathematics at the University of Chicago, Alicia has been diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia and she does not want to talk about her brother Bobby. Instead, she contemplates the nature of madness, the human instance on one common experience of the world. She recalls a childhood where, by the age of seven, her own grandmother feared for her. She surveys the intersection of physics and philosophy, heavy on the physics and philosophy, and she introduces her cohorts, her char chimeras, the, halluc the hallucinations that she only can see. All the while, she grieves for Bobby, not quite dead, not quite hers. Told entirely through the transcripts of Alicia's psychiatric sessions, Stella Morris is a searching, rigorous, intellectually challenging coda to the passenger a philosophical inquiry that questions our notions of God, truth, and existence. And I thought it was fabulous. <laughs> I thought it was so good. I'm going to date myself, okay? When I was listening to Stella Morris, the only thing that I could think of is when I was a teenager. And does anybody remember the show St. Elsewhere? Okay. Comment down below if you used to watch St. Elsewhere. The last episode of St. Elsewhere was, that's what these books reminded me of. Where is it taking place? What is happening? What is the time difference? What is happening? Are we on parallel universes? Is this a time hop? What type of mathematical theory is, is taking place here? There's something going on. I really enjoyed listening to it though. I will say, I really did. Um, ton of quotes I wrote down. There, I'm gonna give trigger warnings out here in Stella Morris. Um, there is talk of suicide. There is also talk of incest. So know that going in if that is something that, um, you know, you really don't wanna talk about. Um, I really do like Alicia in um, Stella Morris. I think her personality that comes through is different, much different from what it was um, in The Passenger. In Stella Morris, she is more confident, gritty, knowledgeable, real, truthful, authentic. I get all of that from her. Um, in The Passenger, her chapters are a little more wishy-washy, probably because she is younger in, um, in The Passenger but also um, she hasn't had that sense of self. Now, Alicia went to, she dropped out of high school. She went to the University of Chicago um, at age 16 and graduated. And then she went to a PhD program, I think. And she's kind of still in the PhD program, but not really. But um, the hallucinations are just, it's just good. It's just good. Yeah, I have it written down here. The sister says, the therapist asked, you know, has she ever been in love? And she said, yeah, with one boy. And she's like, she's like, it was something else. And my theory, and I wrote it down here, she was in love with her. Spoiler. And guess what? She was, we find out later. Um, three, three and a half hours in, she says that she was in love. So... 
There's so much. My advice, if you want to tackle these books, is to do the audiobook. So you don't... I think that if I read the paper version, I would have... I might have DNF'd it. Just because I didn't know what was going on. Um, I loved the character development. I loved Bobby Western. I just loved his character. He just... The narrator just gave him this cool vibe. Um, the relationships that he had... Just amazing, really, really good stuff. Um, trying to piece it all together. I think this is going to deserve a reread maybe in a year or two. Um, Cormac has a lot on his mind. He is thinking a lot about what is life? What does it mean to end, you know, when we're, when, you know, we're all said and done here, talking about some existential issues, talking about um, you know, what's waiting for us next. Lots and lots of stuff like that. I don't know if this is his last work, but it sounds like it's, it's, it's his last work. Um, really, really heavy on that, especially in, uh, Stella Maris. Stella Maris, there is a ton of mathematical theorem. There is also, um, uh, like I said, trigger warnings about suicide. Um, talking about, um, you know, what is reality. And the one thing I picked up in the book, there was a couple mentions of aliens and I'm like, how do the aliens tie into this? Is there something there with that? I don't know. <laughs> but all in all, I gave both of these books five stars because I was entertained. I was gripped. Um, it didn't feel like an audio book. It felt like I was listening to a play and I was visualizing it in my head. Um, I thought the cast of characters were just fantastic. The writing, the descriptive language was beautiful. Um, Stella Morris, you, you can imagine just a therapeutic setting, um, with two people, the entire book and hitting, um, record and play on the tape recorder, recording the sessions. I just thought it was really, really well done. And I'm telling you that St. Elsewhere theory just popped right in my head and I'm like, huh, okay. All right. So I don't know, um, I don't know what it all means, but I was entertained. So there you go. That's my review of The Passenger and Stella Morris. Two very unique books that have a common thread. Um, the Passenger, 12 hours. Stella Morris is just under five. And would I recommend it to a friend? Yes, I would, because I honestly didn't think that I would like um, this book, because, specifically because I really didn't know what it was about. But once we got into the hallucinations, I'm like, I'm all in. Let's go. <laughs> so I really, really did enjoy it. Um, I would recommend people doing the audiobook as opposed to reading it. I think reading it could be daunting. Also, to keep your character straight, because the audiobook is so well done and the narrators, uh, the narrator has a voice for each of the characters. The kid has a voice. Um, the old woman has a voice. All of Western's friends that he has at bars and the bartender um, all have their own unique voice. And it really does help with the flow of the story, I think. So, yeah, so that's that's where we're at with that. Very interesting, Mr. McCarthy. Very interesting. I'm sure there's still a lot of theories and a lot of stuff going on out there about how these two books are connected. Um, but yeah, I really, I really enjoyed them. Okay, everyone, that's it. Those are my two books, my first two books of 2023. I gave them both five stars because I had such a good time with them. And again, I did the audiobook. So um, that's it here for me. I hope you are all doing well. I hope you are taking care of yourself so you can take care of others. And I will see you in my next video, whether it be sooner or later. So until next time, everyone, goodbye for now.